20 years ago, uh, the web was really, really simple. Uh, you just sort of would request stuff and sort of, um, yeah. Uh, and HTTP wasn't really that different from FTP or sort of the other sort of file transfer protocols. Uh, since then, we had things such as cookies. So cookies, of course, is one is, ve is very, very wary of cookies. It, uh, it can sort of, uh, if a client sort of requests something and the client has a cookie, Varnish has no way to actually know if that cookie is just something that's there by accident or if the outcome of the uh, request that it previously has cached as a response mm -hmm. was dependent on that cookie. Ah, yeah. So, so, so Varnish doesn't know this. So the default policy of Varnish and sort of it's written defensively is, is sort of if the client has a cookie, we just sort of don't cache anything. We don't deliver anything uh, from cache at all. So of course, mm. th th there probably isn't a, a sort of a web domain uh, that doesn't have any sort of cookies associated to, to it. So even though it's a, the, 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 the web server doesn't actually need the cookies at all because, I mean, you have these uh, Google Analytics cookies those are sort of show up everywhere. They're not really needed for anything that sort of the uh, the, the the backend web server does. They're, they're, they're just there because it's a convenient way to store some state on the client side and they show up in, in a lot of the HTTP transactions. So, so you need some configuration to sort of suppress these cookies and just basically tell Varnish that it can so safely throw them away and then it will disregard the cookies and then will reserve cache. So that's the that's the most I think common thing configuration item that people do.